Hello everyone, this is the Michael Lem, Net27, or just Michael here. I'm back from a long time, I'm not doing videos, but I'm here to review Quantum Break, the Xbox One exclusive that's been out for a while, and it's been kind of late for review, but I'm doing it anyways, and here we go. So let's just get right into the game. First, let me just say that I'm really good. I looked forward to this game, and to be honest, I really enjoyed it. So let's talk about the game's story. It's taking place in a time when time machines are basically available. You play as Jack Joyce. A uh, performance here by Sean Ashmore from the X-Men series. Uh, he basically meets up a friend, Paul Serene, played by Aiden Gillian from Game of Thrones fame, as, as um, let's say, Paul decides to make a time machine and tries to use an experiment to test it out. Unfortunately, like any science fiction movie with the idea of a time machine, there's always consequences, people get hurt, and powers are given to these young people. Basically, Jack and of course, Paul gets superpowers of time abilities, which cause time rifts and time stutters to happen, and multiple twists and turns that you either may see coming or might not. Especially for me, the story is really outstanding, and to be honest, a lot of the twists and turns in this game are really unpredictable. And the best thing about this game's storytelling is how Remedy Entertainment actually decides to tell it. Throughout this game's idea of adding gameplay with visual in-game cutscenes, and also adding these live-action episodes, it makes the story feel like a bigger type of idea, like a unit, like a, a product's never been done before with this type of game idea in mind, and it works greatly, may I just say. A lot of the storytelling elements here are really smartly used, taking old ideas of science fiction and time travel cliches and taking advantage of, the, of them to the fullest power. And I'm not gonna say too much about the story because I could be ruining stuff, and it's, the footage here might contain mild spoilers, small ones. Not too big, but let me just say right now, the storytelling the performance from all the actors here are truly outstanding. Now, when it comes to gameplay, uh, Quantum Break actually has some really good gameplay, I'll just say that. So, it, uh, the game starts off with you just learning your controls of walking, the camera controls, then you start to learn how to use your shooting controls, like any other third person shooter, and the game also then gives you your time abilities, stuff like you know, it's either time shield, to a time uh, uh, time bubble where you basically stop time in one certain area to a point where you can either run through time. It's a cool, uh, these elements are cool and they also have some cool abilities. Also, the time vision is another ability where you basically get to basically see through walls and find enemy locations. You can also find collectibles this way and other um, little collectibles. Yeah, I said that already, right? Oh, never mind. So let's get back into what is good about the gameplay. There's a lot of, there's a lot of um, gameplay to it, uh, to the point where it doesn't feel that, that much repetitive, I'll say that, the shooting. Thanks to the time abilities and the variety of enemies you get throughout the game, you start off with normal soldiers who get stuck in time, then you have to deal with soldiers who actually can go through time stutters, which the game has, where time freezes completely for a certain amount of time. Time, 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 it's confusing, matter, right? But time. Anyways, these, the variety starts to re, uh, get higher and higher towards the end of the game. But my only problem with the gameplay is due to the idea that a lot of these abilities are given to you within like the first or two or three hours possibly. Which is a shame because the game take, took me around 10 hours to beat. And to be honest, I and by the last few hours, the last few acts, I didn't get any new abilities. Most of the abilities come between the first two acts of the game. Which is a shame because I wish it was much more of those games where Remedy really doesn't have to like throw all the powers at you in one shot. Because in the first le in the first act, all the powers are given to you within a, sh a few minutes. And it's not a bad thing to get all these cool powers up front, but I wish there was much more pacing off how many other powers you can get. But don't get me wrong, the powers here are actually outstanding and cool, but I just wish there was more of them. It might be greedy of me or selfish to think that it's hard to do a uh, game with these time abilities. But I'm just saying that maybe if Remedy decided to take some of those powers from the beginning and put them throughout the rest of the game towards even the end as well, it would have been it would have made the experience just a lot more even sided instead of just feeling stale towards the second half. And not to say that these powers aren't cool; they're really awesome. They, some of these powers, I must just say, are truly inventive. I mean, that's just truly knock out of the park. Will I just say? In fact, if there's any real problem I have, um. The powers is just that I think, but due to the game's length, half of the game, I like 60% of the game is actual in game gameplay, while the other half is like a uh, TV show quality. And to be honest, I will talk on TV show in a second. 
I just wish it was uh, more gameplay overall, you know, because it was just so fun to play. The controls of it all, the smoothness, and how the cover system kind of works. I mean, there's no real cover system in this game. You don't press A to go to a wall. It, it, it automatically acknowledges that you're at a wall and it'll actually just, um, it'll hide. It'll hide behind, like, a wall, a table, or chairs. It's a cover system itself. It's, like, aware. It's aware of itself, so... It's a smarter cover system than others. Although, every once in a while, I did, uh, my character accidentally did pop his head up around a few corners. But overall, the experience of gameplay here is outstanding. And I just love these abilities. I mean, some of this stuff is just truly awesome, may I just say. Uh, now, let's talk about the television prospect of the game. The television prospect is basically these short 25 to 30 minute episodes. And you, you'll get an episode a after every act. There's five acts in the game, but you only get four episodes because the fifth act basically ties with the story itself uh, without having to add an episode. Now what these episodes do is basically gives us more characters to t deal with and giving us more development. But truly, it's the villains that stand out in, this, in the episodes. While you do get a little snippet of, like, of the protagonist like Jack Joyce, you do get a lot more development of characters like the villains here, like Lance Reddick's Martin Hatch and Alien Aiden Gillian's Paul Shereen. You get much more of a development of these characters to the point where it never feels kind of unnecessary that they actually do this. It all feels there just to help along with the experience. And truly, that is just awesome, may I just say. If there's anything that feels odd about these episodes is the fact is this. The only problem I have with these episodes is the fact that they're streamed online. Now what do I mean by that exactly? Well, to be honest, this happened a lot while I was playing, you'll see throughout the footage here, is that if you're streaming this online and you're having a bad internet connection, it will actually ruin the experience for you. It makes a stutter that developers did not really expect, in my opinion, to the point where the, the episodes would freeze and to the point where I had to actually skip some episodes. But thankfully, I did not have to. I just restarted the console for me and basically just got through the experience and basically, to be honest, if you really want to play this game one shot and then finish up afterwards, just download the 75 gigabyte pack, which is basically offline episodes. It's the same episodes if you watched online, the only difference is you don't have to do with any bugs or starting or any freezing. So I downloaded that pack, and my problems were fixed immediately. So let's just, that's just a good thing out of the way. So if you don't want to deal with that internet problem business and complain about it, just download the gigabytes, the big episode pack, which costs a lot of gigabytes, like I said, 75 gigabytes, and just be careful, and then when you're finished, you can just get rid of those episodes, not the episode pack, and just continue your experience. Now, what's cool about this game is its uh, idea of choices and consequences. After each act, you get these parts called junction impacts. Now. Now, these junction impacts have different consequences, stuff like either choosing hardline or PR. Now, the PR one could teach you something as to uh, be friendly with the community or be or nice, you know, let them on your side. While on the hardline, you could be a danger, you could be a ruthless type of uh, leader and ha basically start hurting people. Now, these choices are made throughout the point of view of the villain. So, after each act is done, you basically play throughout the villain's eyes for a little bit and make choices based on what you want the villain to act. It's a fun way to do this, and it basically gives the game a lot more of e playability. So much so that I'm playing it the second time around on a harder difficulty. And I recommend playing the game on hard difficulty because it makes the AI that much more better. Now, like I said, this happens a lot if you stream this stuff online, but thankfully, you just get the episode pack and you want to deal with it. Now, one more thing I can say about the television series overall is the fact of how good the quality is. So that even though I'm not a big fan of the shaky cam type of action that they have here, but to be honest, it's all fine with me. The only, um, you know, the production also, the acting, the camera work, to get the shaky cam stuff, but also the performances here are really well done. And some of the visual effects when it comes to the blood or some of the time abrupt sequences are also honorable mentions here. Just really look at this stuff. It, it's really impressive overall, just what the game shows us and what the game gives us that's truly out of this world. Now, I hope this game does well enough to make it get a sequel because the game does leave some loose ends and there's lots of collectibles talking about uh, the world that they're building here, a lot of this world building idea of pronoun particles. And the collectibles here are actually kind of uh, cool as it gives you much more in-depth development with the characters. Well, it it's not like true like super development like you get through a television series here. It is enough to make you want to collect all the collectibles and go for all the achievements you can get here. You know, and of course, like I said, replayability comes from the choices. Certain choices can have certain characters killed, and certain choices can have certain characters live throughout the scenarios. 
it's all a matter on what you want to play with and how you want to play these scenarios out. And may I just say, the villains here in this game, like I said before, are great as a great building. But the truth that I must say that Remedy did a great job here is with its level design. How? But particularly in one scene which involves a boat crashing into a bridge, which you'll see later in the footage, is truly one of the most awesome scenes. The particle of physics here in this game, the level design that the developers work with, is truly outstanding. I mean, you don't really see this stuff in other games, not this type of particle and visual effects. You know, all this stuff you don't really see in games. And this is the first time I've seen something that looks like this. It just looks amazing to look at and beautiful. And the graphics, I might just say, are truly impressive. And certain members and certain gamers and reviewers might not like the motion blur, but I kind of like it, you know. It kind of uh, mixes well with this type of time vibe type of thing they're going for here. And to be honest, it, it plays well. I like the motion blur, in my opinion. I don't think it's a bad problem, you know. I felt like it gave um, a unique vibe to the experience overall. Like, so, also the music here is also well done, I say. It somebody has this nice type of vibe of mix of like this BR with some hip hop type of thing. So not hip hop but much more of like um like a really good type of music vibe here. And the sound design uh for when you're in time and you're running through time and the part when you throw time bombs not time bombs but time blast is really impressive. Now like I said before Let's just go over now. Let's just go over some of the things I already talked about. Great storytelling, you know. Gr uh, overall, a good length, not the best length of all time. I wish it was kind of longer, you know, because it's how much fun I had with the gameplay. Uh, great level design, like I said. The boat sequence alone is truly outstanding to look at. Uh, great voice acting, great performances from the villains and the heroes in this game. Great twisting turns. Good gameplay, even though I wish I actually did not get uh, Ardo, I wish there was more time abilities and actually did not get too stale towards the end. But overall, Quantum Break is an enjoyable and relaxing experience that's good for any gamer to pick up. So overall, Quantum Break, they break, bake. Quantum Break, there we go, Quantum Break is getting an overall score of a 9 out of 10. It's really amazing type of game, and I love the potential that Remedy Entertainment did here. For the guys that did Max Payne and Alan Wake, it is true next uh, a bet a great game. And what's cool is if you get this game on Xbox One, you basically get all the content for Alan Wake. You get to play the Xbox 360 compatible version of it, because it comes with a DLC called The Rider and the Signal. And if you pre-order the game, you also get the Alan Wake and Eric, American Nightmare, which is kind of cool. And it gives you much more content to see what these developers are really capable of in this gaming experience. Overall, Remedy's new project and possibly best-selling IP of Xbox One is a major success in my book, and I cannot wait to see what these developers do next with their projects. Quantum Break 2 or Alan Wake 2, I'm looking forward to it. For more reviews, check out my channel, and see you next time. Have a good one.